I'm gonna guide you through my machine setup process. We got three ops programmed, ready to go into the machine. This is where I touch off all my tools. I got the taper in here that matches a CAT 40 holder. I got a cheat sheet here. So this tells me exactly where each of my vices are. I'll show you putting a part in the vise, how quick it can be without using a probe. Hey everyone, you might know me from the Impractical Machinist podcast. If you haven't checked it out yet, head over to the Practical Machinist YouTube page, click on the podcast section and give it a listen. I'm Bradley Thomas from Marvel Machining with Practical Machinist. In today's episode of The Process, I'm going to guide you through my machine setup process. This includes programming, setting work offsets, and using an affordable height stand outside of the machine to get my tool length offsets. Rather than using tool setters or probes, I've stepped away from the method I learned many years ago where each tool was manually loaded in the spindle and touched off on a reference point. Uh, the process I came up with was just more efficient for me at the time and it's something that I've adapted over the years and it works for me, it works for my machines being I don't have tool touch off in my machines or probes. So let's get started going over the computer and programming and selecting my work coordinate system locations on a part. All right, here's the part we're gonna to program today. Pretty simple part. Uh, going to the feature tree here. Got a couple quarter 20 tapped holes, pocket. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come into our stock manager. I already know my stock size here. I know it's 6061, so we'll leave that there. Uh, we'll go in, we'll give it its stock size, inch and a half, 3.187, 4.187. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna center my part and my stock in X, Y, and Z. I'm gonna offset my stock from the top and my Z and leave 15 thou just to face that top off. From here, we're gonna insert our first mill part set up. I'm gonna go from this top side here and in my mill part setup, I got face option, perimeter, so we're gonna go open pocket, so this will rough and finish it, and then curve feature for chamfer, and this is gonna recognize any edges that it can chamfer. This is just a quick setup here that gives me a couple features and strategies that it's gonna automatically recognize the stock and put in on its own. So what that does, it puts in my face feature, part perimeter, open pocket, rough, and finish and then the edges that can chamfer from that top view. Uh, we got to add the pocket and the two threaded holes. So from here, we're going to right click, go into mill part setup and recognize the features. This should pull out the additional features. So now we got a rectangular pocket, rough and finish, and then our two threaded holes here. Going to generate our operation plan go into our mill part setup so we can tell it where our origin is going to be. I'm going to select my stock vertex. I'm going to give it this bottom left corner. X is facing the wrong way right now, so we're going to flip that 180, give it its work coordinate, G54 here, hit OK. Now from here we got all of our operations. We can go in here and change all of our parameters. I'm gonna let it, it knows my stock is 6061. This knows all my parameters for 6061, my feeds and speeds, so I don't need to change anything. The only thing I need to do is I need to move this tool 24 quarter countersink tool down and then generate my tool pass. So we got a face, face mill operation, outside profile, rough mill, Contour mill to finish the outside. You got a pocket operation, finish, center drill, drill, chamfer the edges, chamfer the threaded hole, and then tap it. Do a quick simulation for this first stop. So here we got the first stop program checking for any thing crashes, if anything's red, we're good to go there. So now we're gonna to go to our second op, I'm gonna flip it over, insert mill part setup, top feature here. Uh, we're gonna face it, we don't need a perimeter on this one, 
and we'll leave the curve feature for chamfer and so it can select that top edge. Face feature, edge break, generate that operation plan. Now this is our second op. We're going to select this bottom left corner for our work corner offset. We're going to go to G55 here. OK. Generate tool path. Again, my default values are already in here for my parameters for running 6061. Now we can simulate the second op. Face, chamfer the edge. Second op is done. We got one more op on the top here. So we'll go through the same process again, mill part setup, top feature, no face, no perimeter, no curve feature, okay. We're gonna recognize the feature so this will pull out that threaded hole. Uh, we don't need a face feature, we don't need any of these. Generate the threaded hole operation. We got a center drill, drill, chamfer, and tap. So we'll go into our mill part setup here. Give it our work coordinate offset. We're going to go to this bottom left corner here, the theoretical corner. Uh, we'll leave this offset 55 because I'll use the same vise with some jaws and parallels here. Generate tool path. Now we got center drill, drill, countersink, tap. So from here we can simulate the whole part. Make sure there's no shank rub, tool holders hitting anything, and all the stock is removed. And there we got three ops programmed, ready to go into the machine. Tool crib, so it added my drill, my tap. Uh, these three tools here are already loaded in all three of my machines, so I know they're in there with their height offsets. So we're going to add tool one and tool two to the machine. So now that we got that, we're going to go over, load some tools into some holders, and then I'll show you how I touch my tools off and get my values with my height stand. This is where I touch off all my tools. Uh, the system I got here, this tool block, I got the taper in here, that matches a CAT40 holder. And this setup works across all three of my machines, my VF2, my VF3, and my horizontal. So if I take my 3D sensor here, dial this down, bring the dial around to zero. Uh, this value here is minus 13732. So what I'm gonna do is take this over to my machine and put that value in my height offset for this tool. We're at the machine now. We're at a tool offset. I'm just gonna use tool one for an example. So the value we got from the height stand, I'm gonna put in here, minus 13, 732. So now we got that in there. We're gonna load this 3D sensor into tool one, and then I'll show you where that number correlates to the work offset, which we'll go in here, and we'll just set our G54 at Z0, and I can show you where this number and this number line up. All right, now that we got our tool loaded in, in tool one, we got our offset in there and our G54Z set at Z0. I'm just gonna manually feed over above my vice bed right here and show you where that Z0 comes in with the tool offset length. All right, I have my 3D sensor in here. I have it positioned right above my vice bed here. So we're gonna go into MDI just to give you a demonstration where this is gonna end up when I bring my tool one to Z0 off my G54 Z0 work offset. So if I go G90, G54, end of block, G43, H1, Z0, end of block, M00, end of block, enter. I just put the M0 there just so it doesn't go into my 
preset MDI data that I use. Set the rapid at 5% and we'll hit cycle start and this should go down and zero out on the top of my vice bed. There you go. Now I've demonstrated how touching a tool off with the height stand outside of the machine, taking that value, putting it in a tool offset, and where that correlates to my machine's Z height offsets in the work coordinate system. Uh, my vice bed, as I said, is Z zero. From there, when I put parts in my machine, I always know where my Z is. I showed earlier programming that I program from the bottom of my stock on my first stop, any additional ops that I flip over, my Z work coordinate system is from the bottom of that finished surface. That allows me to always know where my parts are in the Z. Uh, it doesn't matter if I set them on an inch and a half parallel, if that part's sitting there, my Z value in my work offset is gonna be inch and a half. Uh, so the next step from there is knowing where my X and Y is. Uh, I got a cheat sheet here. So this tells me exactly where each of my vices are, the center locations, I know the width of my vice, um, I know where my Y is at on my vise with the jaws in there. And I got a quick reference here showing the height of everything and a couple quick features here, my Heimer height, uh, my Kurt jaw face, where everything is. So most of the time when I stick a part of my vise, I know where it's gonna be in the machine based off these values and building my fixture plate here and doweling the vices in location so I know where everything is. It makes setting up a little bit more efficient in most cases. Um, from here, I'll show you putting a part in the vise, machining a part, using these values here, how quick it can be without using a probe. For my first stop, I'm gonna set the part here and use the serial grippers to grip on my first stop on the stock here. Now I know, I know the vise bed is Z0, so if I take a quick measurement here, my Z is 1.688. That's where my stock's gonna sit for that first stop. I'm gonna put that in there. And now to establish my X location, I'm just gonna use a gauge block here and I'm gonna line it up with the left side of my vise. With my stock in the vise position where I need it to be, my cheat sheet here I can put in my G54 values. Now I know that center of that vise is at minus 24.6, so we're gonna put that in. Now I set my stock to the left side of that vise. I know my vise is six inches wide, so I can adjust it another three inches, making it 27.6. Now my Y, I know my stereo gripper's Y location is at minus 4.934. So I'm gonna put that in there. And then my Z, as I showed with the caliper, is at 1.688. So now I got my G54, X, Y, and Z location figured out and set without using an edge finder, a 3D sensor, a probe. Uh, these are just predetermined values based on my fixture plate and my vice locations. So now we're gonna touch off the rest of our tools and get them loaded in. Tools are in, offsets are in. Now we gotta load our program and hit cycle start.
First op's done. Now we're going to flip the part into the next vise for a second op using G55. I'm going to use some inch and a quarter parallels to set it on. We're going to flip it over. And I'm going to shift the part over to the left side of this vise and touch it off with a gauge block. Line it up. Clamp it in there. Tap it down on the parallels. Now I know where my G55 is based off putting the part in the vise and locating it off the left side. And I already know where my Y is. And my Z is going to be inch and a quarter because I'm using inch and a quarter parallels and I program from the bottom of the part up. Now we're ready to run the second half. So that's my process on how I set up my machines from selecting my work portal system when I'm programming, my work offsets in the machine, to setting tools outside of the machine using the height stand. Now if you got a probe or a tool setter in your machine, it's probably irrelevant, but a lot of us don't, a lot of us are still doing it the old school way. Putting tool in the spindle, hand feeding down, touching up on a reference point. This is just another option if you're looking for a little bit more efficient way to set your tools or your work offsets. Another tip is to use tool tags. Um, I put these on all my standard tools. I leave my height offsets on here so I can just grab it from the cart, load on the machine, and it's ready to go. And these tool offsets, like I said, they're universal from my horizontal to my VF3 to my VF2. Um, that's how I set up my height stand so it all just kind of drives together. It makes it a little bit quick for me to set up any of my machines or pull a tool from one machine, put it in the and not have to pick it up again. Um, so that's my process. Uh, if you'd like to see more, comment below, let me know, click like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more from the process. Thanks for watching.